Welcome back, LJ here. And I thought it might be interesting and even helpful for us to do a little of what I see as meditation together. And in this video, if you're someone who's curious and interested, you know, I heard an interesting headline from my husband looking at some of the news he likes to look at last night. And he said, the, the headline was something like, yoga's out, meditation is in. And I thought that was um, kind of funny because really, as we start to really get into what yoga means and what meditation means, we see how they're so intertwined and, and how they play a role with each other. And they can't even be the same thing in a sense. Because remember that yoga really just means union or to yoke or to join or to connect. So yoga is not a set of exercises, <laughs> although there are ways that we use exercises in yoga as part of that union, that connecting, that reconnecting, right? Um, and then meditation really just means about our focus and attention and our relationship with our mind and really is just about like what we're putting our attention on right now. So you could say that even though meditation is a practice and a whole set of practices and there's a bunch of ways we can meditate, quote unquote, and, and like I say in the program I just created, that anything can be meditation too. So we can make meditation like a formal practice thing, but we can also start to see how lots of things can be meditation. But as you start to see those words, can you see how they're connected and that so when we're doing yoga or practicing yoga or even getting into a feeling of yoga, an experience of yoga, a moment of yoga, connection, union, that part of it involves meditation and a more meditative approach, a more meditative mindset and feeling and awareness. And then that when we're thinking that we're doing something called meditation, that part of what we're doing with meditation is reconnecting on various levels. So meditation is a form and a part of yoga and vice versa. Does that make sense? So I always want to be helpful in helping us really see what these words mean. And because sometimes I'll still hear my yoga teacher friends saying, I haven't done yoga in weeks, meaning I haven't gotten on my mat. But <clears throat> Really, the mat practice is just a part of it, and even the mat practice is a form of meditation. And then we can also play with meditation during the mat practice, and all of that can be connecting. But the mat practice is not all that yoga is, and yoga and meditation are not exclusive or different schools of thought or traditions. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I'm excited to keep sharing what I'm understanding about that. So to play with some of how we can feel like we're meditating and maybe in more of like a formal way. What I like to do lately is just let it be about a dropping in we can do, a settling in to right now, and we can close our eyes, but we don't have to. Relaxing is a helpful piece, and so we can always add that as part of what feels like meditation. and. Of course, an awareness of breath is a great part of the meditation or making a meditative shift. And then from this more relaxed place, this more breathing place, we can make some shifts in the mind and in our awareness and approach, which can involve things like more listening, more feeling, more observing, more being present. Like I can hear that car in the background, which you probably do too. So we can see how right now, as we drop into this as a moment of meditation, and even I, you listening to me as part of the meditation, right? But this more listening mode, this more feeling mode, this more observer mode, being more present with what is around us, bringing in our non-judgment and our more accepting, working with what's true right now, and even being willing to honor that and work with that. And both of these are yogi approaches and meditation approaches, right? And then the listening, the observing that we can start to do with the mind is really important with meditation, right? So we get to become 
also more of an observer and just noticing what is happening with our mind and just starting to watch it more and see what is on our mind with that non-judgment. And that's a big part of the meditation, just seeing what's on our mind and watching it and observing it and being with it in that non-judgmental way if we can. And then we might have feelings that even come up with part of those thoughts. And even as we let ourselves be in that more and be with it more, we can allow the feelings. So we might even have tears as part of meditation and part of the noticing and observing and even being in what is true for us as part of our meditation. And then certainly as we just start to listen more and feel more and shift gears, we may have more moments of quiet with the mind. And we can intentionally think that we're quieting the mind on purpose and play with that. I think it's more about seconds at a time as something that's going to be a big deal for most of us to just play with quieting the mind for seconds at a time or just noticing if that does happen. If we have gaps between thoughts, we can kind of deepen and play with or we can intentionally create those more, even with little tools like imagining we can windshield wipe the mind to clear it for a few seconds, quiet it. But a lot of these tools also just help quiet it more. The listening, the feeling, the observing, the non-judgment. And so we're listening, feeling, observing to all of it as what's true right now, becoming more present and even becoming more aware that it's all one, even in this moment, what's happening within us and even around us all part of right now and we can keep adding our relaxing and keep adding our breathing and even starting to add some love like approach <laughs> and that's where you might feel like it's like tapping into a more spiritual approach with yourself and what you're noticing and feeling and even how you're being in the moment or just a more heartful approach more loving approach so that means maybe noticing when you do have thoughts or feelings or realizing what's on the mind Finding ways to love our way through that and even say things like, I love that, I'm noticing that I'm you know, worried about that and that's a tool that can interestingly shift the energy of it and free us up and even let ourselves feel it more to free it. And then also just getting into that perspective more with ourself of the non-judgment and just loving what we're noticing. So it's a cool process, this combo of Relaxing, breathing, of course, we always think of those things as part of meditation. And yes, the quieting of the mind, but I think the new news, the big news that may free us up a lot, and I get into this in my program also, some of the big news is that it's not about just trying to turn off and quiet that mind for a long period of time, because I think most of us notice like we're just really not able to do that, and I'm saying that maybe that's not the goal, that we're not supposed to be repressing thoughts or pushing them away, or trying to force the mind to be quiet for this long period of time that really just seconds at a time can be huge and curative and like refreshing the canvas of your mind we now know this creates more um, creativity and just new ideas to quiet the mind for seconds at a time so I'm on a mission to spread that as the exciting news with meditation that just the relaxing the breathing the noticing the watching of the mind even just that is helpful much less how we can love ourselves through our stuff and free up our stuff. So there's a lot of therapy that goes on with meditation, I've discovered, through my own work with myself and getting to work with other people. And then, yeah, that sure, we may learn more to quiet the mind, develop a new relationship with our mind, become more of an observer, more noticing. And then, sure, we can start to make new choices and new habits from that noticing and that awareness as we really do take a look at what's happening with our mental patterns and even our life patterns so there's a lot of inner work that we can do and the non-judgment and the love approach really helps and is huge and maybe what makes it work best so um, yeah and then there's lots of ways you can go from there obviously with meditation you can do amazing visualizations and guided journeys and all sorts of things but this is more about you guiding you knowing how to drop into meditation wherever you're at and not needing any special tools or any special people <laughs> or any guidance at all. That that is what I think um, can be exciting about how we can use meditation and, and not have to make it some complex big deal, but more of a really easy part of life that we fit in and really affects us and helps us. So I'm excited to share it with you. And ah, maybe we could just re-relax one more time 
take even a bigger breath. I love the belly breaths. Exhales really relax us. Let stuff go. Ah. And yeah, even dropping into those moments of a meditative approach and perspective. So, so much we can get into with our meditation and even how it's part of our yoga if we want it to be. So thanks for listening. Love sharing this stuff with you. Namaste.